So welcome to the panel doing business in the Web3 space. And um, yeah, welcome to the panelists, um, which is um, Felix Margo. And afterwards, I, I would say everyone is into introducing themselves. Heinrich Wilking and Dr. Florian Zawodzki. So, sorry not to pronounce it wrong. And um, yeah, we are talking now about how to do successful business in Web3 and um, being compliant. And um, excuse the slide, we changed the topic to make it more appealing, more open, and not only to the banking metaverse. So it's, uh, I think every, uh, it's valuable for everyone. And let's start with a short introduction of the panelists. So I give the word to you. Hey, everyone. My name is Felix. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, my name is Felix. Um, I'm an old dog in the crypto space. I know Dennis for a long time, actually, way before, I don't know, three bull cycles ago, probably. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, the co-founder of many different projects. Futerio is my consulting company. I'm here out of Thailand, where I just arrived from Thailand, Bangkok, uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Um, I ran Dash there before. We brought Dash to Asia. So I'm the co-founder of uh, Dash Next, which is the Asian part in this decentralized Dash network. We build payment systems all around Asia, connected PSPs and so on. Now I am co-founding a metaverse project called Space, which is a social commerce metaverse. So what we do is kind of a very easy approach for everybody to do business in the metaverse. Um, we offer a platform where you can easily choose templates and in no time you can set up yourself a commercial experience, be it a shop, a ticketed event, an art gallery, like every kind of event essentially. So the way it works is you go in there, you choose a template, you upload your inventory, choose the colors, price and so on. You go in the room, you arrange the stuff and in 15 minutes you have basically a shop. Let's say you sell t-shirts, so you can do that. Um, we have a fulfillment center in the background where we can sell physical or ship physical goods all around. But of course, you can um, sell and buy physical, digital, and upcoming digital goods that combine all that in a new way. You can also kind of offer any kind of services. So let's say you're a yoga teacher, you're a language teacher. You can spin up a language school in no time and start selling your services all around in the metaverse. So yeah, that in a nutshell. It's a lot, it's a lot. We can discuss later. So, yeah, I'm Heinrich. Uh, I'm a risk management and uh, compliance specialist. Uh, um, my whole business, I worked in uh, helping large organizations using SAP or SAP software, uh, how to be compliant and how to generate trust uh, in their business and in their business communities. Okay, hello also from my side. My name is uh, Florian. I work with EY, um, based here in Berlin, but we are also doing yeah, basically um, international business uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, by profession, I'm a German certified tax, advi tax advisor. I did my PhD in, um, also in Texas. Um, the topic was focusing around uh, Web2 platforms. I'm pretty sure we'll also focus on you on platforms, which is in my view are, in my view, the heart of um, Web2 and also still re relevant in uh, Web3. Um, I'm basically in the space and yeah, almost one and a half or two years uh, when the, the topic came up from, from our tax perspective and we basically uh, found out that we as the biggest tax consulting firm in Germany had no too little clue of uh, what is happening there and uh, how you should treat it from a tax perspective. And then I basically started that uh, kind of an EY and now we already uh, formed a group. We, we call it the TAS. Uh, task force, a tax task force, uh, focusing on all the um, all the problems you could have in Web3, be it from DeFi, f normal NFT sellings, doing business and metaverse and virtual uh, worlds, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, now I basically can um, fill my uh, work week with the uh, Web3 stuff, and it's fun. Uh, and I can combine my tax world and uh, the Web3 world, and this is what I do day in day out day out and compliance and um, being compliant and risk management and, and legal topics are very important I would say after 2022 uh, in the crypto space but not only in the crypto space it's it's always important and um, we all know that compliance is also coming to Europe with the Mika regulation uh, starting the sandbox in the next week so then uh, 18 months later we finally know where the space will be and um, 
We can also talk about about um, the perspective from 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 you guys. What you think is 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 the most important for a project? I mean, the most projects are starting just as an entrepreneur. Uh, maybe not over, over, uh, overlooking the terms and conditions, or or is it is it a tax event now to sell a token or an NFT or giving an airdrop or just merch? Uh, if you if you send merch as a as a as a as a as a shipment, let's talk very open about learnings, about insights, about um, uh, whoever wants to start can start. What what mistakes are founders doing and 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 how sh they should improve or could improve? Are there some grow hacks? So what you what you saw? I think for organizations uh, and, and large enterprises, um, this topic is really, really at the beginning. Um, I think the meta discussion, the Web3 uh, environments, they are mainly driven out of uh, marketing uh, departments that generate, help generate um, awareness for the brands. And brands are using um, now more and more products, digital um, products, um, or digital assets and uh, assign them with physical assets to get more customer retention, customer attention on the consumer side. In the business for B2B, um, there is not much really, um, or not many organizations have really started to um, move their back office business, I would say, into this new world, and this is something um, that is coming next. Um, I see a lot of opportunities. Some have already started, for example, in the so-called um, uh, climate and sustainability business to open the um, full um, delivery and supply chain um, or the, the relevant information, the compliance information, to make this public uh, using the, the blockchain and uh, this technology. However, there are many more use cases, in particular uh, to secure your business. I think GDPR is also an area uh, where many organizations are very, very sensitive. And uh, the, the, the solutions that the uh, that Metaverse and the Web3 is currently delivering are not really tied into the, these uh, regulations or rules. So uh, many uh, people that ask me um, why Metaverse or Web3 isn't successful in this business, I can only tell this large business is built on trust. And trust is not something that we see as embedded in uh, Metaverse and the Web3 until this uh, is not really achieved to get the, this integrated into the frameworks that large organizations really follow, uh, there will always be barriers and resentments in these uh, with decision makers to adopt the technologies. Maybe what, what is your impression? Mm, several points, different points I, I want to touch on. Um, you started with trust and I think um, from, from our uh, client basis we already have the big clients from normal tax advisor uh, advising we're doing and they they want to go into the space because it's sexy probably not the the best reason to do so but uh, they have the their brands they have trust in their brands and probably we have all taken at least one look in the bitcoin white paper where where we know that uh, the blockchain is about trust about having their trust in the in the chain not on the players so that's what we had before um, so speaking from the clients we usually have, which are mostly not the startups, are the brands which already have trust in their, in their brands and this is what they're using and monetizing, using as, uh, as marketing tools. Um, and I think as of now, it, it worked. We saw that especially a year ago with the big artifact drop, uh, the, the Adidas drop and um, other, I think they were two major ones. There were other smaller brands, I think, Lacoste did also something, and the, the beer brewers did something, but yeah, that it didn't really catch that much attention. Um, so with that uh, initial trust um, um, that was used, that is still being used, but um, if you just see what happened yesterday with the artifact uh, monolith and the, and the voucher for, for shoes, I'm not really sure if that trust is 
used or abused and maybe there might not be that much trust left if they really continue in, in just doing so and just having faith that they're big brands and that um, people will buy their stuff. So um, I think this is an important point uh, to raise that uh, there also has to be something, something must be delivered uh, and uh, the time where just NFTs are in hype and where they just simply can be sold and everyone apes in, this time will soon be over. And your, yourself is having a, a, a Clonix as a as a picture. You you started very early your journey in in NFT. So how how was it uh, when you when you how you came personally in to that? Yeah, like the, the exact thing was um, I work now at EY for I think seven and a half years. And what I usually do is I work in the in the knowledge management. So everything which comes up in the tax world, I write an opinion on it, or I, say I write a newsletter. I, we do a podcast, whatever. Also kind of marketing, but just for tax people. And then, yeah, I think almost two years ago, there was an, uh, a guidance from the uh, from the tax authorities or a draft for guidance. And this is what we usually in other tax fields comment and then basically say, well, why not change something here or change something there? And this is what I usually do. And then, yeah, all the partners were approaching me and telling me, yeah, well, it's Web3, uh, Metaverse important. We also have to give our opinion to this uh, draft um, um, guidance here. And I'm like, Okay, no problem. That's what I usually do. I write something, but what should be the contents of of this uh, of our opinion? And then everybody remained quiet. <laughs> then we found out, yeah, actually nobody had a clue. And this is when I basically started thinking, well, we're the, the biggest fish in the German tax bowl. Uh, that's not a good situation when we don't have a clue about what the tax treatment of the future should be. So then we started it. Um, and then we had some uh, some major projects also as clients. And yeah, the, the clones uh, with a couple of friends caught my attention and then we um, bought that clone and yeah, so we still have it and um, uh, the, the ones the which were uh, non-German um, colleagues, they basically told me early to get my hands dirty <laughs> and that's what I did and this is where I am. Absolutely, the skin in the game, we call it in this, in this scene. And um, skin in the game, you have more than enough. And um, do we have any, any, any take on, on, on what I ask about both panelists? Yeah, for the sake of a fun discussion, let me just kind of take a different perspective and add a few kind of other points that I come to realization, like from a kind of builders and, and somebody who runs project perspective. I mean, first of all, money is always short or there's always too little money to do what you want to do because you always have like great ideas and every idea costs money. So. I guess the compliance and legal part is always a painful part that nobody likes to pay. I guess there's a big um, perspective in the whole space and a friend of mine just recently kind of summarized it well to say, I don't want to have a lawyer that makes me everything like that is expensive and makes me everything legal. I want a lawyer that kind of helps me like find how far can I go without going into prison basically. <laughs> I guess that's kind of where we usually come from from the, from the Web3 space. Which is okay, you know. Um, another thing to add here is it's um, very important of where you are. I mean, now we're we're in Germany. I'm. I said I live in Thailand. We are building a metaverse. My team is in 20 different countries. You know, we are registered in several spaces, and you know, for several. One is for tax. One is for company registration. There's a few things to consider where you want to be. I mean, do you want to be like you know, Bermuda's has you can do that. But you know it has a certain touch to it. You might have different other other problems getting bank accounts and so on. So it's maybe good to go to Switzerland or you know there's a lot of trade-offs to make on the whole way. So a lot of things to consider here. Um, so you know that kind of all comes into how compliant can you be? And then obviously the question is what do you really do? And you know tax is one uh, thing. Also there's a whole. Um, you know, options you can play on where you get tax refunds, depending on what countries you're in and where you place your devs, where you have your marketing teams, there's kind of different pots you can tap into. What I want to say is like we are in a space that is highly liquid and for me the, f the question of where should I be in a country is really arbitrary because I live somewhere where I want to be, I run my company where it makes sense, I have my team where they are where I can save taxes, where I find talent. So, you know, all these kind of old stuff has really become super arbitrary for me from a, from a builder's perspective. And then again, you know, I see a lot of uh, lawyers, 
compliance people walking around at events where you know I spend most of my time at, I find they usually have a hard sales pitch. I'm super happy for you guys if you you know have a lot of clients and have uh, you know a lot to do. I feel there's a lot of people from different countries and you know again it's a cost you have to bear and something you you have to be compliant about. But you know. I mean, man, maybe then last point is like when you build a metaverse, I think you become, you, you have to answer a lot of specific questions because now, you know, it's inherently in the internet. So, you know, if you build a platform, it's always the question, how far can you go? And there's obvious limitations that also, again, if you build a company, put you in very different spots. So let's say you build like Sandbox a game, which is something very different than you build a casino or you build a porn game or you know you go to these edge cases basically so it's always like you know there is like this normal stuff and yeah it's okay but there's always like this small line to cross and it's kind of easy right so you come into a situation where you say okay what if i in my case i said we open templates so theoretically you can open a language school but you can do a strip club right so the question becomes how can i provide like prevent that you open a strip club and you know put like all kinds of illegal stuff in there, right? Which is obviously not what I want, but again, then it comes to this platform question, like how can you prevent that? Do you have to police? How active do you have to be? Do you have to just disallow but when you, you know, when it happens and so on and so on. Um, you, you want to follow? Yeah, if I just really may uh, directly comment on that. Um, uh, I totally see your point and um, I, I never could be actually a, a builder or uh, really a founder because I would be way too scared. Uh, um, I wouldn't know what to do, um, but I think it's important that y you have uh, like opposing parts, lawyers and or the tax lawyers, and just give you like this is what why I wanted to comment directly um, uh, to give our perspective. Like, um, if you just ask uh, what kind of lawyers or, or tax people do we want to be, obviously we also want to be the person to tell you, well, easy, I can make it work, no problems. Don't worry, just pay my money. I'll deal with the problems. You do your business. That's what you're what you're supposed to do. But um, I just had that conversation, I think, two weeks ago with clients. It's actually it's not a good person, uh, not a good person, not a good uh, uh, perspective and uh, thing. If you're in Germany, you read the law, and also I'm bound by my profession. Um, uh, I can't really if there's a written there, I can tell you B, and I obviously I can try to see the perspective which helps you, which also then benefits me because I get more um, work to do for you. Because if I just tell you, well, don't do it, it's too complicated, yeah, also no work for me. So several reasons why that is not cool for us to do. And I can also name other reasons um, um, just to, to make, to also try to build or to help the community, which is also a reason why we're, we're doing this stuff here and not doing some boring Grundsteuer stuff or whatever. Um, um, but it is tough, and this is what we are experiencing, I think, especially here in Germany and probably also lawyers around the world. Maybe it's, it's easier for the ones in the Bahamas or somewhere where they have less regulation. But my direct comment is it is really tough um, to really be in a position to, to tell you, well, don't worry, we can make it work. And from the problems we have had at clients so far, I unfortunately haven't been in the, in the position and I'm pretty sure if you find lawyers, tax lawyers who uh, see themselves in the position um, and basically brag, easy, come to me, easy, pay me the money, no problem, they're probably wrong. Yeah, I'm. Uh, allow me one comment to that because what I realized is, you know, it's kind of a constant move around the world on where, depending on the regulations. I mean, if you're in the space for a long time, you can see kind of patterns. It was Malta, it was Cyprus, it was Lisbon, it was Puerto Rico. It just now is kind of everybody is in Dubai right now because it's super easy. The big exchanges are moving there. So, yeah, it's probably also Germany is a very tough and remains a tough spot to do a business like that. If you go to the, uh, sorry, sorry, one comment, uh, but if you, but as you mentioned, the Mika, as Europe now has it on the flag to be like uh, an, uh, an island for compliance to basically always also advertise that it's, it's good if Europe can be compliant here. Yeah, that doesn't, works in a certain direction. Um, I think uh, this discussion uh, has two extreme parts. Uh, what, I what, what I would like to add here is, it is very much around 
finding the right way and how to convince people that they trust you, that they buy from you. So if you have a company in the Bahamas, there's always uh, a gap, an expectation gap saying, oh, is this company really reliable? Should I buy from them? If I, do, if I buy or need some drugs, some medicines, and I know this company is based in, on the Bahamas, and they, I have some dubious um, uh, indications, I would not buy that drug from that company. I would rather prefer to buy that uh, drug, even if it is more expensive, from another more reliable company. So um, if we talk about extremes, I would say the middle ground is something that the metaverse has to define for themselves. Uh, what is the middle ground to attract people to join me? And this is part of community building. So if you have a community of robbers, fine. Then uh, th they, they feel comfortable there. But if you want to do deal honestly with, uh, with your customer base or with your business partners in a business environment, then you have to say and to be public with some generally accepted standards. Uh, they are not limiting things, as we can see here. They are, I would say, they are enabling certain business habits. And if that is uh, a compromise for, for compliance, I'm very, very happy with it. So it's not just building barriers, but th they, they very often are seen or viewed as barriers um, because it, these extremes, as we can see here, uh, force certain rules and regulations, and they are not all relevant, you know, neither on the other, uh, on the one hand, nor on the other hand. You know. And this is something to find the middle way and say, okay, this is my customer group, this is my community. I want to do business with them, and they, I want to trust uh, or provide trust to those, and I achieve this trust in in the rules that I apply. Yeah, the tragedy is that we're still looking for a few billions in the Bahamas. <laughs> and then obviously nobody gave a shit. <laughs> and then we had a compliance officer with headquarter in the metaverse. So it's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Okay. By the way, we are not in the Bahamas. We are registered in Switzerland for that reason, because we thought it's important. But then, you know, history proved me wrong. I mean, in, in general, compliance is a, is a very huge topic. And every uh, year like this, is, is bringing that on the radar and, and more people understand it. Even it's a, for a lot of people and entrepreneurs boring and, and long way topic, but also a very important one. This is what you have to say. And um, always when I do business and I talk to lawyers, I would love to have this answer. Hey, that's my rate per month and I get shit done for you. But the reality is that you as a founder always have to get feedbacks, emails, educate yourself. In the end, you feel uh, yourself like a lawyer because you have to give them a signature. And equal if it's in Germany or another country, you have to read what you get because you are CEO of responsibility in this country. So um, this is why equal if it's, let's wait the, the outside um, uh, yeah, police or whatever. But it's, it's, um, it's, it's this how I, how I think about it because in the end it doesn't matter if it's on the Bahamas or Caymans or it depends on where you want to go. Is it a token project? Is it a metaverse project? Are you dropping something? Is it a, a corporate you have to consult? Of course, they look into in European companies or big five companies to, 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 to do it for safety reasons and reputation reasons. And um, it's, 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 um, even if you say Bahamas, I have some friends which are doing business in Switzerland and um, they, they made, a, made a token sale back, back, back some years and um, uh, the Finma blocked uh, 60 million just because they don't understand the, the business case <laughs> until now. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's in the end equal which country you go because if, if the um, government doesn't understand your business or uh, someone is, is, is saying, it can also end, you know. It's more, the, the, the problem is that the completely crypto space and Web3 space, we are rangers and we are going forward, but it can happen that tomorrow uh, the police is knocking and asking you questions. The tax authority is coming and asking you questions. The Bafi and the Finma is closing our bank accounts because they don't understand your business. And that's, that's more the question, how to make successful Web3 business. And it's not easy, but uh, what would be your blueprint advice? I mean, how important is from the beginning a lawyer in your team, a taxation officer? I, I mean, that, that's, that's something as a, as, a, as a maybe closing question because when you answer on that, I mean, I'm, again, I, I come back to it's, it's a cost factor for me. So I think the best way for you as a lawyer is, as you actually say, to educate yourself 
and to already come with scenarios to a lawyer and to kind of, you know, instead of letting them make everything and expect they kind of make the whole work for you, it's better to already try to give them, you know, your conclusions and your options so you can save some time and some money. So I think it's important to have a lawyer in the team and to keep the cost short, you know, and as much as required. I can only say if you start a new project, embed compliance, the tax and the legal aspects at from the first beginning so that you communicate what you want to do and evaluate what has to be done. All projects that I have seen in my life, they, they made the error and they said, okay, this is a cost element, so I try to limit the cost as much as possible. I start with the functionality first and then everything else comes later. And that really was too expensive, very risky because some companies already could close the, the new initiative because it, it uh, didn't get or did it didn't get the final approval either from the auditors or from the governments or from the tax authorities. So uh, start embed those requirements from the beginning. Then you ha you can dedicate people for individual answers and questions, and this also sets the stage for the for the other participants that they need to take care of certain rules. Otherwise, they just run into uh, the wrong direction and they could be managed and maneuvered into the right one if they were aware of this. Mm -hmm. And then it, it becomes an inbuilt facility of your functionality and you can always explain this to, to the market, to your customers. Mm -hmm. um, I can uh, I second that, and this uh, obviously the best uh, practice is what we as uh, consultants have to tell people. So this is the official version. So please consult uh, right at the beginning. But I also see Felix's point. Um, so uh, we are obviously not living in a perfect world, and I see where you have limited resources. You cannot put your chips on all bets, uh, and therefore I think um, this is then what boils down to to a good or a bad businessman. Like because we can only uh, advise, uh, consult, but the decisions have to be made by the businessman. So the first decision is make it easy, make it marketing, legal compliance, or a good product. And I think then it depends on the business. And if you're in that business and basically, yeah, just for the sake of the example, just copying another business and say, well, maybe this is not that um, tough from a legal perspective. We are selling, <laughs> I can only make up examples which are, are probably um, not easy, like kids' toys, uh, small parts, uh, whatever, probably not a good example, but just for the sake of uh, uh, simplicity, take an easy product. And then you can, as a businessman, can decide, well, okay, legal uh, tax might be like in, in the second round of, uh, of people we, we are able to pay. So I think this is what, at the end, then separates the good from the, and also the successful businessman, if they also know, or maybe they also, they, but what we are doing is consulting. They, they are buying us for giving advice. If you have that knowledge on your own, you don't need us. So if you're going into a business field where you, where you w used to work before, you have that knowledge, you might also get tax advisors uh, like in the second or third round. But this is then at the end where, you, where the businessmen uh, and the women have to make the decisions. What I wanted to say, as I, as I also learned it, the last years, that, that in the end you must make the decision. Is it what you want? You must make clear, very clear, um, is it about saving a taxation? Is it about your right uh, jurisdiction? Is it about, about being compliant? Is it about having someone in the team which looks good for the regulator because he's having some certificates or some background information that you need it if you don't have it? So it's clear you, as your founder, should have a clear mind and educate yourself, read a lot, ask entrepreneurs, people you have in your surrounding, and from that um, it comes a decision. If you're a startup and entrepreneur, it will be a different uh, a decision as a corporate. Um, but um, that's that's also like a, like a circle of life to be in compliant. And I'm I'm pretty sure that compliant companies like like like, like yours and services uh, which are which are offering um, in the in the taxation will be in the next three years having a, a gold rush. <laughs> to be honest, because it is it is necessary for all businesses which missed it, you know, three and four years after the government comes and asks you latest for things. And um, that's happening actually. And also, you know, with Mika, what I said, 
So let's see, but also uh, companies which are in the Bahamas still searching money, uh, which are in other countries, um, need, need now advice, but more to get out of the prison and not taxation. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, very um, exciting uh, times. And thank you for your, for your time. We already passed the, passed the line. And now what we do is we're continuing with, with Florian and his, um, uh, his, his talk. And after that, um, Heinrich, because we had some presentation issues. And then we go um, in, the, in the schedule to Christian. Christian will maybe stay 10 to 15 minutes later. But um, Holger and me are very uh, uh, open to start later with a beer because Holger from Meta um, uh, Brew is already here and, and, and happy to talk. So a lot of exciting uh, news during this evening. So enjoy now the talk of uh, Florian and after that from Heinrich. And um, yeah, that's, that's a short conclusion. If you want to talk to, uh, to, to my friend here, uh, uh, just catch him. He's a great entrepreneur. Okay. Thanks, guys.